Hello everyone. Good to see you again. I hope all you are doing very well. In this video, I'm going to talk about the useful estimation method for quotal inference, difference in differences method. Before you start, don't forget to check out our course website for if there are readings and videos required for this lecture. In this lecture, I'm going to first introduce the very first application of difference in differences method, John Snow's analysis for cholera transmission. Then I'm going to explain the details of the method with the parallel trend assumption, which is an important assumption for unbiased estimation of Kozelin. Next, I'm going to present the expression of the method in a linear regression specification, which will be used in analysis with real data. Last, I'm going to introduce two marketing applications of difference in differences method. One is Avi Goldfarb and Catherine Tucker's study on the substitution effect of search engine advertising. And the other is Zhang et al.'s study on demand interactions in sharing economies. Okay, are you ready? Then let's get started. Let's go back to the middle of the 19th century. At that time, cholera was a critical infectious disease even in the UK. John Snow was a founding member of the Epidemiological Society of London, which was formed in response to the cholera outbreak of 1849. He thought that cholera is transmitted by contaminated drinking water, not through air, and tried to convince people of his theory with clear evidence. But conducting experiments couldn't be a solution because of two problems. First, it was the time before the concept of randomized experiments was developed. Second, it was impractical, infeasible, and more importantly, unethical in the situation of no verified treatment cholera. Instead, he focused on a natural experiment where he could apply difference in differences method to show that cholera was waterborne. In detail, he took a look into the household using water from two companies in London. One is the Sawdock and Vauxhall Waterworks Company and the other is the Lambert Water Company. Both companies took their water from the Thames which all had been polluted by cholera victims' evacuations via runoff. But in 1849, the Lambeth had moved its intake pipes from the Thames to the upstream above the main sewage discharge point, giving its customers uncontaminated water. The good thing for Dr. Snow was that the customers of two companies were very similar. The only difference was that they drank different water. Dr. Snow carefully collected, prepared, and linked a variety of data sources to show the relationship between water purity and mortality. If his hypothesis was right, the Lambert houses should have lower cholera death rates than the others. And the data clearly proved his hypothesis. The death rate for the Lambert dramatically decreased after each pipe moved. This table shows the number of deaths per 10 cave household for each company in 1849 and 1855. The death rate for the Lambeth reduced from 85 to 19, whereas that for the Sawdock and Vauxhall slightly increased. Although the customers of two companies are very similar, there still could be an unobserved vectors different between the companies and between the years. Let's say Gamma SV and Gamma L are the company's fixed effects, and Lambda 1849 and Lambda 1855 are the time fixed effects. Then we have equations that the depth rate is given by the sum of the company fixed effect and the time fixed effect for each company and each year. For example, 
1.5 of the solar can voxel in 1849 is the sum of the fixed effects of the solar can voxel and the year 1849. One difference is that the move of the intake pipes affected all the dax rays for the lambents in 1855, which is denuded D. From the equations, the value of D can be computed by difference in the equations twice. First, let's compute the difference between the companies in each year. In 1849, the difference between the companies is negative 50, which is equal to the difference between the company fixed defects because the time fixed defect is cancelled out. In 1855, the difference is negative 128, which is equal to the difference between the company fixed defects plus the effect of the move of the pipes V. Next, let's compute the difference in the differences. It is negative 78, which is equal to the effect of the move of the pipes itself because the company fixed effects are cancelled out this time. This simple calculation enabled Dr. Snow to compute the causal effect of drinking clean water on mortality, supporting his hypothesis on the pathway of cholera transmission. What Dr. Snow did for his cholera study is exactly what difference in differences method is. It is a quasi experiment, which means the use of an experimental model of analysis and interpretation to data sets where the data generating process is not itself intentionally experimental. This definition clearly delivers the poor concept of the difference in differences method. The data used in Dr. Snow's study did not come from a well-balanced experiment. So the causal effect couldn't be measured directly from the data. Instead, Dr. Snow exploited the unique characteristics of the data to identify the causal effect. The fact that when the pipes of Lambeth had moved to the upstream allowed for the identification of the causal effect by Differencing twice. Dr. Snow's approach can be generalized for various tests of causal inference under specific conditions. First, the difference in differences method requires a panel data set. That is, there should be two or more samples and two or more observations for each sample. Second, the treatment should be applied to only a part of the observations of a part of the samples. It is obvious that we need four cases of before and after and the treated and untreated for differencing twice. Last, the parallel trend can be assumed. This assumption is the key to the identification of the causal effect through the difference in differences. Now, I'm going to show a figure that graphically illustrates the parallel trend for Dr. Snow's data. This red dot indicates the death rate when clean water was treated on the lamb in 1855. What we want to obtain is the ATT, which is the difference of this observed death rate from the rate expected if the Lambert were not treated with clean water in the year. This hypothetical rate was not observed, and let this gray dot indicate the hypothetical rate. Then, our interest, ATT, is given by the difference between the red dot and the gray dot. And the other observations are used for the inference of the unobserved hypothetical rate. Let this blue dot is the observed death rate for the lambda in 1849, which is a controlled case. Then the gray dot of the hypothetical rate is given by the observed death in 1849 plus this A, 
which is the unobserved hypothetical change over the years if the land bus were not treating. The hypothetical change can be inferred from the change in the observations of the other unit, the Sawdog and Vauxhall. Let B indicate the change in the death rate for the Sawdog and Vauxhall of the years. Assuming that the slope for the Lambeth is the same as that for the Sawdog and Vauxhall, we can infer A from B and finally infer the gray dot and the treatment effect. This assumption of the same slope is a parallel trend assumption. If the slopes are not the same, that is, the trends are not parallel, the causal estimate of the treatment effect from the difference in differences method is biased. The parallel trend assumption can be formally expressed in the potential outcomes causal model. The DID estimate is given by differencing the observations twice. T indicates the treated case and C means the untreated case. Then the DID is the difference between the difference in the Lambert observations, the red dot and the blue dot, and the difference in the Sawdog and Vauxhall observations, the green dot. Adding and subtracting the hypothetical right, which is the gray dot, doesn't make any change. Then the first part, the difference between the red dot and the gray dot is the ATT. And the remaining part is the difference between A and B, which becomes non-zero if the trends are not parallel. Thus, this part is called the non-parallel trend bias, and the parallel trend assumption means that this bias is zero, making the DID estimate unbiased. The DID method can be written in a linear regression model with two dimensions. For Dr. Snow's data, let's say S is the company dimension and T is the time dimension. And then, this equation is the observed depth terrain equation. Y is the observed outcome variable, that is, the observed death rate for company S at time T. The observed outcome is given by the common intercept for all observations alpha, the company fixed effects gamma, the time fixed effects lambda, and the three money effect D. The last term Epsilon is an error. Here, the coefficient of D is the DID estimate of the causal effect of the treatment. By differencing in the same time, the intercept alpha and the time fixed effects are cancelled out. And by differencing in the same company, only delta remains because D equals 1 only for the Lambeth in 1855, and it is a zero for the other cases. In analysis, the treatment D can be generated by an interaction of two zero-one binary variables. One is the variable indicating whether S is the treated or not, and the other is the variable indicating whether it is the time when the treated unit was actually treated or not. In general, there are more than two units and more than two observations. Then the linear regression equation is given by the common intercept for all observations, the fixed effect for each unit S, the fixed effect for each time t, and the interaction for the treatment effect. Of course, other control variables can be added into the regression. So far, I have explained the poor concept of the difference in differences method. Now, I'm going to introduce two applications to marketing data. 
The first one is Avi Goldberg and Catherine Tucker's study on the substitution effect of search engine advertising. This study presents empirical evidence showing that online advertising serves as a substitute for offline advertising, especially for the personal injury lawyer market. To find the empirical evidence, the authors exploited the natural experiment. There was a rule that bans solicitation by personal injury lawyers for a while after personal injury or death from accidents. This solicitation is sometimes called ambulance chasing because a bunch of lawyers moving and following ambulances after crash look like chasing the ambulances. As of 2007, the rule is still effective in some states. As in this table, some state bar regulations still prohibit lawyers from directly contacting potential clients who have recently sustained an accident or injury. The authors focus on this difference between the states. For simplicity, suppose that there are two locations, location one and location two, and two online search keywords for legal services, keyword A and keyword B. Keyword A is a keyword for non-injury cases like divorce, and keyword B is a keyword for injured cases. And location one is a city in the state where the solicitation is allowed. And location two is a city in the state where the solicitation is not allowed for the injured cases. Then let's think about lawyers' willingness to pay for online advertising on Google for each keyword in each location. Basically, the willingness to pay can be decomposed into two parts. One is the keyword specific effect and the other is the location specific effect. But for the injured cases, the lawyers in location two are not allowed for the solicitation and they may be more willing to pay for online advertising. As Dinuit did. This extra willingness to pay can be interpreted as the substitution effect of online advertising. If it is significantly positive, the lawyers want to pay more for the online ads, implying that they regard the online ads as a good substitute for the not permitted personal styling efforts. So the authors fit the DID regression model to the data collected across the keywords and the cities in the United States. The log of the ad cost per click is given by the keyword fixed effects, the location fixed effects, and the interaction for the print money effect. The coefficient beta captures the lawyer's extra willingness to pay for the injury-related keywords in the cities where the solicitation is not allowed. This table presents the main result. This blue box indicates the estimate of the coefficient beta the lawyer's extra willingness to pay for the injury-related keyword in the solicitation-restricted cities. The estimate is 0.052, implying that a solicitation regulation leads to a 5.2% increase in the price of an injury-related keyword, supporting that online advertising served as a substitute for the personal selling effort. The second application of the DID method to marketing data is Shun Yuan Zhang and her colleagues' study on the demand interactions in share economics. The sharing apps are now very popular for various services such as Uber and Lyft for ride sharing and Airbnb for home sharing. And those services are interrelated to each other. For example, consider a vacation trip. At the airport, you may call a Uber or Lyft driver to get to the place you booked 
through Airbnb in advance. Of course, you may use a yellow cab instead of Uber Lyft, and you may prefer hotels to the Airbnbs. But suppose that the Uber and Lyft service is not available. Then what would happen? Hotel demand may not be affected, but the demand for Airbnb may reduce because Ubering is generally more convenient than using taxi to get to the Airbnbs. So, in this study, the authors estimate the influence of the availability of the ride-sharing services on the demand for home-sharing services by exploiting a natural experiment. The Uber and Lyft's temporal exit from Austin, Texas in May 2016 due to local regulation. The equation used in the study is a standard linear regression of the DID. The demand for the Airbnb is given by the city fixed effect, the time fixed effect indicating the period of the Uber and Lyft's temporal exit, and the interaction for the three month effect. The coefficient of this interaction captures the full effect of the temporal shutdown of the ride sharing services on the demand for the phone sharing services. This table presents the estimation result for the main model. This blue box indicates the estimate of the total effect. It is negative 0.0378. Dividing the estimate by the average demand when the ride sharing services were available, we have that the temporal exit of Ugo and Lyft led to a 14% decrease in the demand for Airbnb. All right. That's all I have in this lecture. After watching this lecture, please check out our website again for if there are additional readings and videos required or strongly recommended, online quiz assignment, and handling exercise in R software. Then, see you in the next lecture. Bye-bye.